Now, when it comes to traditional single cut guitars, there's really one name and one name only that most people think about. That, of course, is the Gibson Les Paul. After all, they're the originator of the solid body arch top electric guitar. Now, some people might give a nod to PRS. They make a gorgeous arch top single cut. Maybe even the Gretsch Duojet. It's got a history just as rich as the Les Paul. But I don't think a lot of people know about or would even think about something like this. I mean, just look at it. Insane. Let's take a listen. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. Well, as you've just seen, we've got something pretty cool in the studio. You guys know I do lots of mainstream guitar reviews, but I really like to find guitars that kind of fly under the radar. There's not a huge, you know, online presence or anything about them. Such is the case of this guitar. It is the Godin Summit. Now, Golden guitars are made in Canada, and I get a ton of requests to have them on the channel, but I wanted to wait till I could find just the right one. So I found this one on my local classifieds, did a little wheeling and dealing, and ended up with this beauty. So what exactly is the Golden Summit? Well, clearly it's their traditional single cut arch top design, but can it hang with the likes of the Gibson Les Paul? Well, let's find out, because there's a few really unique elements on this guitar. So I'm just gonna hit up some of the highlights. Uh, full specs will be down in the video description below. You can uh, find that there, but let's just hit up some of the unique features. Right, so let's start by looking at the headstock. I'll take some shots as we go along so you can see in greater detail. Now, when we look at the overall shape, I would describe it as playing it pretty safe. There's not a lot of risks with that shape, uh, which is okay when we're talking about a traditional design, uh, but there's nothing that really makes it stand out. It, it does play it pretty safe, uh, pretty nondescript headstock. Now, when we look on the back, uh, we've got some Godin branded uh, tuning machines. These are non-lockers, but they are fantastic. Just no play at all in the system. Every single one is tight and beautiful. So I've got to say these tuning machines are fantastic. Now moving on to the nut, we've got a Graftech nut. Again, that's a great appointment. Uh, when we're talking about a traditional three plus three and you're doing big bends, there's a lot of demand on that nut, um, you know, to, to keep the string from holding up. So you want something that's gonna allow the string to move back and forth and bring you back into tune. So nice to see that. Now, the next unique thing is the inlays. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty intense. You know, most inlays don't really take up the whole width of uh, the neck, but here we go. This is uh, part of the Supreme line. So uh, there are Godin summits that just have like dot inlays and stuff. But when you go up to the Supreme here, these are kind of like the split uh, prisms, maybe. I don't know how you would describe them. And then on 12th fret, you get the, the three. So a little bit unusual just because of how wide they are on the fingerboard. You don't see that too often. Now, when we look at the fretwork, uh, it's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's excellent, but it's good. And I would say it's on par with Gibson, maybe a touch nicer than what you would find on most Gibsons, but I would say it's about equal. So nothing that really blows me away, but quite nice. And I've got to say the binding work is nicer than on my Les Paul. So I do have to mention that. Um, let's move on to the body. Now, the first thing I want to say about the body and really the guitar as a whole is it's very, very light. Now, when I picked it up, I figured it was probably about eight and a half pounds. I threw it up on the scale and it came in just under eight pounds. For a guitar like this, that's phenomenal. Like if I had a Strat that was like under eight pounds, I'd be like, eh, maybe touch heavy, but I don't think I'd notice it. On a guitar like this, you're like, wow, that's fantastic. So I love to see that. Now, of course, that flame top is really part of the showstopper along with those gold foil pickups. We'll uh, hear those in a second. But yeah, vibrant and beautiful from every angle. Uh, that flame maple top is gorgeous. Now, since we're talking about, you know, things that make this guitar unique, we have to talk about uh, some of the body routing. Now, right around the pickups, if you can see, the body's kind of been rolled. 
you know, you just don't see that very often. I'll take some closer up shots if it's not showing up on the camera here, but uh, both pickup routes are kind of like beautifully kind of folded in around uh, the route. Really, really cool stuff. And same thing with the controls. Now, I'm not sure if, if Godin did it first or PRS, but uh, yeah, just having that routing along the controls uh, make, just gives it a really premium look and feel. Now on the backside, you can clearly see there's two pieces of mahogany. That's what you're gonna get on a high-end single cut guitar. There are a few one-piece bodies out there, but they're exceedingly rare. So this is uh, pretty common. Now I gotta say, I do prefer if they match the color up a little bit better, especially on a guitar like this. Uh, I think they could do a better job, um, you know, really getting the coloration perfect. But that's a look at the backside, and I've got to mention, although there's no belly cut, there's a really nice contour that runs along the top. And it doesn't look like much, but man, it makes a difference when you hold it up against your body. Um, yeah, so I've got to give props to that. They've, they've kept the traditional look while just giving you a slight little hint of a bevel there. But when you, uh, you know, play a Les Paul and then you play this, man, it's a noticeable difference. Now, since we're talking about what makes this guitar unique, we need to talk about the electronics. Number one, we've got gold foil pickups from Lawler. Now it should be said, the Summit can be had with regular humbuckers, but you know, this brings something totally different to the table. They look really, really cool. And of course we'll listen to the tones in a second. The second thing is uh, like a lot of uh, Godins, they have a little black button right by your tone control right here. And when you hit that button, it gives the guitar a boost and it kind of changes the EQ. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, you know, how much does it affect the tone and all that stuff? We'll look at that. I think they call it the HDR, the high definition revoicer, I think is what it's called. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we're gonna test that out in a second. And as for the rest of like the hardware and stuff, we've got uh, Graph Tech, I think it's Resomax uh, bridge and saddle. Uh, great stuff for sure. GraphTech makes awesome things. And uh, yeah, just some really like kind of thicker type binding that goes around the entire guitar, thicker than what you would see on most. So that's just sort of sets it apart aesthetically, I guess. So there you go. Uh, I guess while we're talking about electronics, I'm gonna pull the back off uh, the cavity cover here and let's take a look inside. Now, as you guys can see, there's a circuit board and a battery on the inside. So clearly not your standard, you know, traditional single cut. There are a few tricks going on here and that really runs the, the revoicer button. Now, the nice thing is, uh, Godin says the battery will last four or five years. And if it does die, well, it just cuts out the boost feature and you know, your regular pickups will always work. So that's nice. So even if the battery dies, well, just use your guitar in the standard mode and you're good to go forever. And if you don't like the revoicer, well, you can just pull the battery out and never use it or just leave it, whatever. So uh, that's good to hear as well. So those are the broad strokes of the guitar. Let's plug it in and take a listen. Well, let's kick things off by testing out the boost switch. That's what I'm most curious about. So I'm in the neck pickup. We'll just play clean and see exactly what that boost switch does. So right now it's off and then I'll kick it on. And uh, yeah, let's try it out. I'll just play uh, some arpeggios here. Yeah, that makes a pretty big difference. Yeah, so that's a pretty big boost. I think that's gonna be useful, you know, if you wanna solo uh, and just using a clean boost, or if you wanna drive your amp or pedals a little harder, just kicking that baby in. Uh, definitely, yeah, has a, a substantial boost. Now on most Les Paul style guitars, I'll find myself using the bridge pickup, the neck pickup, not too often in the middle position. This guitar, however, brings something completely different to the table. Uh, take a listen to this in middle position. Uh, boost switch is off. <laughs>
like if you told me or maybe guess what kind of guitar that was, never in a million years would I guess it's a traditional single cut. <laughs> you know, let's hit it with the boost. <laughs> You know, just so much quack. You know, you just don't expect it out of a guitar like this. So as soon as I put it in middle position and, you know, just use my, my fingers a little bit, I was like. You know, there's just tones you don't expect uh, coming out of a Les Paul style guitar. So pretty cool in uh, the middle position for sure. And in the bridge, uh, much more jangly than, you know, your traditional like high output humbucker for sure. You know, honestly, that reminds me of, yeah, like uh, a Gretsch or even a Jazz Master in that bridge position that just has so much jangle. Now that we've heard the summit in isolation, let's jam over a backing track. Link to the track is in the video description below. As always, you can check it out there. It's time for the one minute solo. So here are my final thoughts on the Godin Summit. Now for comparison here, I've got my Gibson Les Paul Standard. You guys have seen this on the channel many times, uh, and it's what I would consider one of my most beautiful guitars. The top on it is just drop dead gorgeous, whether you like the blue or not. Uh, it's one of the nicest tops I've ever seen uh, on a Les Paul or really any guitar ever. It's just perfect. <laughs> that top is awesome. Um, but I just wanted to show you like some of the dimensional differences uh, between the Summit and the Les Paul. Most notably for me is the carve. You'll notice the carve on uh, the Summit here is a little bit more sweeping. From the edges, it kind of like takes longer to kind of get up into that center ridge. And I think it makes the guitar look really beautiful or elegant or, you know, high end. So I'll just kind of like rotate the guitars. Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. Just the difference in the carve on the top. And then of course the overall dimensions are slightly different uh, too with the lower horn and uh, with kind of like the waistline and stuff like that. So I just wanted to show you guys the differences between them uh, visually. And of course this is the Supreme trim, which is like the highest trim. So you get the, the inlays and stuff that 
maybe look a little bit more vibrant or high end or whatever as well. So there you go. That's kind of like the differences uh, visually between the, the two uh, guitars. So clearly there's lots to like about the Godin Summit. It plays well, it sounds great, it's lightweight, it's got interesting electronic features, it's got interesting pickups. Of course, aesthetically, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, so what are the downsides? And I think the main downside is probably the price because it competes with the Gibson Les Paul standard in price as well. And you know, I think most people, if they're looking for a guitar like this, are gonna default to a Les Paul. You know, it just has the brand recognition. Uh, it probably has the resale value as well. Um, so I don't know how many people are gonna spend Gibson Les Paul money for a Godin Summit. Um, that's probably the main downside. That being said, this guitar is made in Canada. Now you guys know I'm not a geographical snob at all. If a guitar is good, I don't care where it's made, it's a good guitar. If it's a bad guitar, don't care where it's made, it's a bad guitar, right? Um, that being said, um, having a guitar built in Canada might mean something to some people, just like Gibson made in the USA, right? So that is a potential kind of, uh, yeah, an upside to that high price, the fact that it's made in Canada and it's made very, very well. So those are kind of my final thoughts. Lots to like about this guitar, very unique instrument. And if you've already got a guitar of this style with like humbuckers, something like this maybe does make sense because you've got the little HDR button and some unique pickup uh, choices. So overall, I love this guitar. It's absolutely fantastic. So uh, that's kind of like my final thoughts on the Godin Summit Classic Supreme. <laughs> So anyway, I'll link to uh, the Godin site and this guitar. Uh, like I said, they do offer um, some cheaper options in this guitar without you know, some of the in insane inlays and stuff like that. So um, if you just want like a flame top with regular humbuckers, they have models like that as well. So there you guys go. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed seeing a Godin on this channel. Uh, yeah, really happy with this guitar. I'm sure I'll be playing it for a long time. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the demo. Take care.